Friends, Brian here for Yes You Can Play Guitar. Do you ever notice that every household has a guitar, but there's not really that many good guitar players? Do you ever wonder about that? There's so many people out there, I'd probably say 90% of people who take up a guitar, they end up quitting, they think, I just don't have it, I don't have what it takes, I'm not naturally gifted. For me over the years, I would get very, very frustrated at hearing this, okay? I recently did a series, and I'm working on a series with a good friend of mine. He's a powerlifting champion, really strong guy, and he has been a guitar collector. He's got thousands of dollars worth of guitars. He's been kind of noodling around with guitar for 10 years, but he, he's not really that good, and he's not really, he's sitting there like a lot of people going, hmm, like is there something more to this? Why am I not getting better? So he came to me and we decided to do a YouTube series about it. We're gonna do a guitar transformation. There's so many things that people don't know. There's so many things out there, there's so much confusion, BS. I see really BS ads for people saying, oh, in guitar you need this, 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 and this. And I'm like, oh, this is great. And now people are gonna be even more confused. There's apps out there that give this promise of you will be playing guitar, but that really doesn't become the end result. There's so many reasons why people fail in the guitar and it's so needless. When I was doing this shoot with my friend, we had a long discussion and I pointed out a lot of reasons why people fail in the guitar, why people pack it in or they get discouraged. A lot of things you probably don't hear about. And I thought, you know, while we were filming it, I'm thinking, you know, this is, this is something. This can really benefit a lot of people who have either quick guitar or they packed it with the guitar and put it in the closet. I talk about a lot of the common pitfalls that a lot of people don't realize. So this is a segment of this discussion. It's things that why people fail that you can easily correct that you don't know about. You're probably gonna learn something. Check it out, here it is. You know, I often say to people the analogy of, you know, everybody owns a guitar. It's portable. Cool people play guitar, for the most part. If you know what I'm saying, okay? You know, if you want to play piano, it's great, but it's hard to put a piano on your back and walk around town yeah. with it, or even drums or whatever, but, but everyone owns a guitar. If we went around and knocked on every door, there'd probably be guitar in almost every house. But why are there not a lot of really good guitar players? Why is that? Well, I think it's just a lack of practice. Yeah. And also, I think it's discouraging. Yeah. Because there's six strings, you have two hands, mm -hmm. you know, you, you know a couple chords, but then it gets intimidating. It's very intimidating, and also when I see a guy play like yourself, yeah, it almost looks impossible. I, I always scratch my head, it's like, how the hell well, did you get a, that good? Well, there's a lot of reasons, right? So let's talk about, uh, we'll get to the main points of it. This is going to be a really good video for everyone who's new to guitar, or struggling, or going, hey, you know, I'm, I'm just not gifted with the talent, you know? Um, I got my first guitar, it was an 86, and for a number of years I tried to teach myself. And I was in this vicious cycle of picking it up, plucking around for a few days, not really know what I was doing, and then putting it back in the case and throwing it back in the closet. And that went on for years before I finally got up the nerve to call my first guitar instructor. And he was a really good, like growing up in Ottawa, he was like the mm -hmm. guy. And, um, and then it just changed my life completely, and then within weeks, all of a sudden my playing really started changing. But I, I want to talk about some stuff that, these are some things that probably a lot of pitfalls that a lot of people out there already have. Um, one of them is, even if you look at, for a lot of people in the beginning, now guys, I, I ran a music school, I've taught thousands of people. I don't think there's anything wrong with holding the guitar like that once you've had some technique and you've been playing for a while. But for starting out, there's some problems, right? So when you play guitar, right? If you play something higher up in the neck, right? Yeah. Okay, just go ahead, just play, play anything. Okay. So, let's look at this here, okay? How his body is holding this guitar. There's a couple of things. Now, he's wearing a strap. He's got a nice strap, too. It's good. But, first off, the guitar is not lining up ergonomically very good with his, his shoulder and his elbow and his wrist. Okay? So, because of that, you're, you have to turn your shoulder, turn mm -hmm. your wrist, and turn your elbow. So, that off the bat... It's making the playing harder. Okay, once you've been playing for a while and you have technique, who cares? You're going mm -hmm. to see some great guitar players playing like that. Not a big deal. The other thing is, 
is no matter what, you have a strap. A lot of people don't have a strap, but even if you have a strap, when you do this at some point, this hand has to kick in to help you hold the guitar. Yeah. So if you were like, okay, we're gonna to go to the gym and you're gonna do bench press, but I also want you doing lunges at the same, can you do two jobs at the same time? Is that uh, gonna affect your bench press if, you're, yeah. if I'm saying do yeah. lunges at the same? So it's the same idea with the guitar, right? So a lot of people, when they hold it like this, they also, your, your fingers, we have to train them to be able to play guitar, but we've already put them at a disadvantage by saying you have to hold the guitar neck up. So that right alone, and my, now this is just me, you know, people might say, hey, you're crazy, which is true. You would be the first person to say that. But in all my years of teaching, I would say to people, especially beginners, I'd say, I am going to get you comfortable holding a guitar. So let's say I have no strap. Classical, okay? This is called the classical position. It's over my left leg. Now, it's lined up ergonomic, ergonomically. That is the word of the day, folks. It's lined up very nicely to my shoulder, my elbow, and my wrist. And um, I don't have to use this hand at all to lift the guitar up or balance it. So I can just, it's, it's free just to play, okay? So that's a big thing. Now, as a guitar teacher, I was an ethical guitar teacher. I knew a lot of guitar teachers that they taught guitar to live. They didn't live to teach. I love teaching guitar. So a lot of them would be like, okay, give me some money. What are you gonna learn today? They just don't care. Mm -hmm. They don't care about, you, you know, so, but I would say, and I would collect information from all these students and watch the progress. All the students that I'd show, very first lesson, I'd say, I'd probably recommend you hold the guitar this way. Well, what can I do about that? Take some time this week in your practice schedule, hold the guitar over your left leg. Get comfortable with it. It's centered to my body. Some people are like, oh, dude, I'm not comfortable. No, no, don't twist your torso. Just straight center to your body, okay? Now, Steph has a thicker torso. He's got a strap here, but even holding this, okay, he, he might have to adjust the strap at some yeah. point. But even now, ergonomically, it's going to start helping out with his playing. So it's my opinion, but I've seen the research with all my students. The students that come back the next week and they choose to hold it like this, I say, okay, that's cool. We might have a few problems when we start getting into playing up here and doing bar chords and stuff, but that, that's okay. I did my job as a teacher and I told them. As I said, once you have the technique, it's not a problem. If you want to hold it like this, I can play this too. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, I don't. I just don't think it's I, the people that got onto classical seem to improve a lot faster consistently. Okay. So that's only my educated opinion. There are probably be people out there saying, "Oh, I don't know." Da, 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 da. Okay. So that's the first thing. Holding the guitar. So for me, that's a big one. I've seen that with people. Once you get some technique down and you're, you've been playing, if you want to hold that way, who cares? Mm -hmm. It's all good, right? Just people that hold it that way, I've, I've seen them personally, they seem to progress faster. There are some people out there, I don't know if it's their body type or what, they can hold the guitar like this and it just seems to fit okay. I've seen that as well. But 90% of everyone out there, it's holding the guitar classically. Now, the next thing, so people get a guitar. We have YouTube now. We didn't have YouTube back when I started out on guitar. But people get a guitar and then they don't know what the hell to do. Like they don't know what to practice. They don't have someone in person saying, no, you got to adjust your thumb here. You got to move your wrist like this. No, don't press as hard. You'll see a lot of people. I did a video a while back. It was probably like the best guitar tip you've probably never heard. It's about intonation. A lot of people, they squeeze way too hard and push the notes. There's so many different things that can happen, right? But a lot of people, they don't know what they're supposed to practice. A common pitfall people will do is they get in front of YouTube, which is great. Hey, you're watching me on YouTube here, which is great but they'll get on YouTube and they'll do what I call the, the YouTube trap. They'll be like, okay, well, I'm gonna go on this channel. I'm gonna do this lesson. They get in 20 seconds, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes, and they're like, nah, not for me. I'm gonna go into the next, nah, not for me. I'll do, have you ever done that? Yeah. Yeah. So many people do that, right? Mm -hmm. Where with me, you're gonna have a game plan. You're gonna know what you need to practice every single day, mm -hmm. right? Like when you put the guitar down, do you have that feeling of like, okay, I accomplished something. I got a little bit better at this, or I memorized this chord, or I... A lot of people don't know, everyone says they don't practice. Okay, but what the hell are you supposed to practice? How's a beginner supposed to know? So that's another big thing as well. But for me, there's a three-part formula that I tell people. Number one is technique. If you don't, if your fingers, you want your fingers to be able to perform whatever it is you want to perform. If you want to play Dream Theater, if you want to play Neil Young, if you want to, you know, just play your own stuff. But if your fingers aren't working for you, well, what, 
that's a big reason why people just say, oh, oh I, I'm not meant for this. Yeah. Right? So how do we develop our technique? Well, technique is, you know, you practice it a number of ways. A common one that I like to show people is doing some exercises like being in the gym. You don't walk into the gym and bench press or deadlift. You don't deadlift 700 pounds and you don't walk in and bench press 500 pounds. How do we start? Yeah. Warm-ups. Warm-ups, but we, we start. It's a period of incrementation, yeah. small increments over a period of weeks, months, and years. Yeah. Right? But if I can get people on track with that, I see a huge difference, even in a month. People will be like, wow. So technique, that's great. Plus technical or theoretical knowledge or understanding theory. Now, theory is a dirty word. It's like the word diet, right? You say diet, and I'm like, oh, that's it's a, a dirty word. word. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a dirty word, right? Like, and that's okay. But a lot of people are like, you know, if I listen to a song, I want to know how it works. You know, if I want to write a song, I want to know what key I'm in, what scales I can use, and what intervals I'm using. And uh, But for a lot of people, I saw a post on Instagram a while ago from a very popular YouTube guitar instructor. Uh, great channel. Seems like a very nice guy. Uh, but everyone's saying, yeah, theory's stupid. Yeah, it's stupid, man. You don't need that. You don't... Really? I remember having an experience in my very first band. I was not good. And I was a rhythm guitar player, and that's insulting rhythm guitar players. The lead guitar player was quite good. I remember one day he came up to me and said, yeah, can you play the C sharp on the A string? I'm like, what's a C sharp and where is it? Right? And then he'd say, okay, no, I, I want you to do this. This is a minor seventh chord. I'm like, why is it called a minor seven and how do I play that? It was very, very embarrassing, right? It's like having skills. It's like having tools. Like what's, what's wrong with knowing some theory? Yeah. You don't have to be a PhD at it, but once you get the basics down, I teach them what's called the theoretical ladder. The first step of the ladder for a lot of people, if they're wondering, is to say, okay, hey, you know, if I said, what, what, what note is that right there? The eighth fret on the G string, could you tell me? Nope. Right? I know it's a D sharp or an E flat. I don't even have to think yeah. about it, right? Yeah. So for a lot of people going, well, I'd like to look into theory. Well, your first step is understanding the layout of the notes on the guitar. Mm -hmm. We're going to work on that. Yeah. Okay, so that's your first step with theory, right? And then it's application. If I say, okay, Steph, we're going to do, uh, this is like, um, you know, we're going to do the E harmonic minor scale with a bit of volume. And you're like, Okay, that's great, and I can do it, but now how do I use it? That's application, me saying, well, Steph, this is how we're going to use it and how we're going to apply it with, when it comes to soloing and when it comes to playing. And, you know, you can even songwriting. You can write songs using the harmonic minor scale. There's all kinds of different things, but I also like to uh, teach how to apply the techniques as well, right? So let, let's say if you learn a guitar lick let's <laughs> let's say let's say you just learn like a like a, a basic pentatonic lick right so if we do it in a minor okay i do a little bend here that's cool right cool one, one of the things i'll get a student to do is i'll say okay let's put move it over to b minor move it up two keys okay we'll play it through all the different keys and i might be like hey you know what what variations on that could we do? Okay, well, what if we do this? Okay, or what if we change that around to a slide? Okay, we can come up with a million different variations, but we learn how to apply things. So for a lot of people, when they pick up the guitar, I feel bad for people getting into guitar. They, they you know, you, you buy a guitar, you know, you get a strap, you get, you know, an amp, whatever, and then, you know, nobody buys a guitar to suck. Mm -hmm. People buy a guitar because they, they love guitar and they love music and they want to get into it. But they don't know. You know, it's like if I wanted to be a lawyer and I just said, well, I'm just going to buy a book on law and study and I'll just kind of figure it out as I go. And it's like, you know, a common thing I used to get from when I was teaching, but especially when I was gigging, I'd get people coming up after my gig saying, hey, you're a pretty good guitar player. I play guitar myself, you know, how do I, you know, I would always collect data. And I'd say to them, I'd say, well, how do you practice, right? And they would be like, well, you know, I, you know, I sit in front of the TV, which can be good, which can be bad. We made an old video about that about a year ago, okay? It was kind of, it was during the, uh, the Squid Games times, I remember that. Yeah. But anyway, uh, for, for most people, this is how they play. They're in front of the TV, it's like... Okay, they know the same few chords. I know that one. <laughs> right? And then they play it over and over. 
but they're in front of the TV, right? So by the first commercial, the practice is done. They just, they're just kind of like... Or they're trying, you know, like... Anyway, can't do that anymore, but, but I used to be able to, but... But I'm one of those guys, though. Yeah, and then their practice yeah. is over and they don't realize it, and they're in this weird cycle. If they're continuing the guitar for... Uh, a few months, right? And then they're just kind of like, oh, I don't seem to be getting any better, and maybe it's, I'm not meant for me. And you know, like, you look at the best Eric Clapton, Ingve Malmsteen, Eddie Van, they didn't just pick up a guitar and just, oh, look at me. Like, Eddie Van Halen didn't pick up his guitar and start playing Eruption. Yeah. Right? So it's the same thing on guitar. So I realized that, you know, I'd say to people, I, I can accomplish more in 20 minutes of practice than you can in two hours of mindless noodling. Like noodling's fun, it's cool to do that, but practicing, right? So if I if I have a schedule, I sit, uh, if I'm working on stuff, I'll be like, okay, I got 25 minutes. Okay, so for a beginner, what can they do? You know, okay, I'm gonna learn this scale in this position. Okay, I'm gonna memorize that scale. That fingering, right? Okay, cool, maybe I might do some exercises. Okay, I'm gonna memorize a new chord. Okay, there's. E sharp nine. Right, there's all kinds of different things you want to do, but you want to feel that you've accomplished something when you're done. 90% mm -hmm. of everyone starting out on the guitar, they don't have that. And then I feel even worse for a lot of students because they uh, probably go to guitar teachers that don't care. I, I had an old friend of mine many years ago, he took some guitar lessons from me a long time ago, and at the time, he went to like a music store and he took guitar lessons from actually from our area. He's a famous guitar player. He's, I've seen him live. He's an amazing singer, guitar player. He moved down to the States now. But so this guy who went on to become pseudo famous, uh, who was a wicked musician, he would say, he'd sit down with my friend and say, okay, today we're going to learn a C chord. Okay. And then he'd go to the photocopying machine for 20 minutes, come back and say, here's the charts for it. See you next week. Yeah. Right. Well, the problem is too is you you and you have a right to gauge that with your guitar teacher too. You can say, uh, hmm, you know, does he, uh, you know, does he really care at all? And I often tell guitar teachers that struggle in their business that one thing you can do that costs you nothing is care. If you care and you want the best for people, uh, that can go a long way with teaching guitar because people see that. But where, where a lot of guitar teachers just they just don't care. Pay me. Oh God, yeah, I gotta use the bathroom. You know, I'll be gone for 20 minutes while you're supposed to be learning something. Yeah. So, and that's not cool. So, um, these are a lot of things that we're talking about. So I'm gonna get Steph, just play a little bit for us, Steph. But can you play any, have you played any lead stuff? No, not really. Steph plays no lead, okay? We're gonna fix this. That's pretty cool. So he's got some he's got some rhythm. He's, he's... Okay, we've got some bar chord stuff happening there. Okay, cool. That's good. So that we have a little video of Steph playing. So we are going to do this transformation. Steph is going to stick with it. He's going to do everything I show him. First thing I'm going to do today, we're going to do a little bit of basic theory. He's going to learn the notes on the guitar neck, and it's going to be a priority for him to learn that. I'm going to help him get some technique and we're going to set up a practice plan for him. But we are going to have Steph on a plan. He's going to come back in a month and we're going to see the progress. Yeah. And you Move guys can see it. it for yourselves on YouTube and see what you think. So again, Steph, thank you so much for coming and taking part in this. I'm really excited for this because it's going to be proof. I don't like just doing guitar lessons. I like doing guitar transformations. You know how you get people all the time doing, oh, my body transformation. I did it. I like to do guitar transformations. So remember, folks, practice hard, but practice smart, which he's going to learn. And we'll see you soon.